Welcome to part one of our conditional loops series, and we're going to just talk about an introduction into conditional loops. Now, in our previous video series, we would have come across the different ways that code is executed. The first way is sequential programming. That's when code is executed in a sequence. So the order that the code is written is very important because it'll do line one, then line two, then line three in that particular order. Then we went to selection programming and there we discussed how we can make sure that if we wanted certain code to run based on certain criteria. So it's a way of avoiding certain code but executing in certain criteria or conditions so you can decide if that code is going to execute or not. And then we did for loops where we talked about iteration and that's where we repeatedly do a section of code. So let's just recap that particularly because that's what conditional loops fall under, iteration program. And here we've got, for example, a flowchart where we set num to a default value of 7. And we check if num is less than 100. So we want to loop, for example, until num is greater than 100. So while it's less than 100, yes, it is less than 100, then do certain code, that whatever we want to do. And then we're going to change num. Let's say we increase it by 5. So it will do that loop and then it'll go back up to the question and say, hey, are we above 100 yet? If not, then we'll continue in this loop repeatedly until we get to a point where num is greater than 100. So therefore, if it is greater than 100, it'll slip out the loop and then continue with the code that happens after the loop. So in that way, we can repeatedly do a section of code based on some sort of criteria. So now when we did for loops, you'll remember that it, the structure was for i equal one to 10. And we particularly used for loops when you know exactly how many times you're going to execute the loop. When that loop starts, it knows exactly how many times it'll run. So for example, if you want to sum the first hundred numbers, you know you're gonna go from one to 100. If you wanted to find if a number is a prime number, you have to count all the factors. So you would count all the factors from one until that particular number. Or you wanted to say how much money are we going to have in a savings account after two years I and mean, there's a monthly calculation. You know you're going to be doing that calculation every month for two years so that's 24 times. So you know exactly how many times you are going to do the loop. If you do in that scenario then you use a for loop. But there are times when you don't know how many times to do the loop and for that you need a conditional loop. The way a conditional loop works is if you don't know how many times to execute it, then there'll be some sort of criteria or condition that'll make it stop. So there's a reason to stop the loop inside the loop, some sort of criteria or, or count or something that's going to happen that'll make the loop stop. So for example, if you want to sum all the numbers until the sum is greater than 100, we don't know how many numbers to add, but when that sum gets greater than 100, that will trigger an event that'll stop the loop. Or you want to display the first 10 prime numbers. I don't know how many you know all your prime numbers, but if you don't know which the first 10 are, then you are going to obviously go through a set of code where you count uh, um, how many prime numbers you found, and the moment you found 10 of them, you can stop. Or if you've got a savings account and you want to save until you double your money, you don't know how many times to do that loop, but you know what the calculation is going to be every month. So continually do that calculation until the money that you've got in your account is double what the original value was. So in those cases, we didn't know how many times the loop was going to repeat itself. So therefore, we used a conditional loop. Now, in conditional loops, there, in Delphi particularly, there are two types of conditional loops. Not all programming languages have both forms of uh, conditional loops. Uh, but so it's... Let's go look at the two examples. The first example is a while loop. And the other example that we're going to speak about is a repeat loop. Now that's what Delphi has. So most programming languages have what's called a while loop. So let's go look at what a while loop consists of. So the while loop has a while part operator. Then it has a condition and then the do operator. And then after that will be a statement that it will repeatedly do based on that condition. Now if we have a second statement, that second statement is not attached to the while loop that is separated so the while loop will only do statement one if we want to do multiple statements in a while loop if you haven't learned by now about delphi what do we do we put in a begin and an end if you want to do multiple statements for repeatedly doing for the while loop so those are the, the that's the basic structure of a while loop now for a repeat loop we start with the word repeat and then we will do a couple of statements now you'll notice here we don't need a begin end and then we have an until. So whatever happens between the repeat and the until is the code that is repeated. Now, when will it stop? Well, after the until, we will have a condition. 
So we check the condition there at the end. So because we have the repeat and until and all the, the statements that we want to repeat are between those two, we actually don't need a begin and end in this case. So what are the differences between the two loops? Well, to be honest, 99% of the time you can, you can use either one of these loops. There's a special case when you would use one of the other. And we'll get into that when we talk about the differences. Now, the first difference that we need to talk about is that a while loop is what we would consider a precondition loop. In other words, the condition is checked before the loop, pre the loop starting. So before the loop starts, that's when the condition is checked, where, for example, a repeat loop, is a post condition loop where the, the condition is checked after the loop right at the end of the looping uh, code okay so there's the the, the the name the terminology that we refer to them now what does that mean well a while loop will run from naught to infinity that that eight that's fallen down that's the infinity symbol that means that that loop could run one or naught times one time five times a million times infinity times because the loop is checked at the beginning, it's possible that, that when that loop is checked the very first time, it could be that that condition is met so that the loop doesn't occur. That means that the loop statements will not happen. It, it's met the criteria, it'll jump out the loop before it even got to do the statements inside the loop. That's why it's possible that a while loop could occur no times to infinity. But with a repeat loop, because the condition is checked at the end, it will run through those statements at least once. So therefore, the repeat loop goes from 1 to infinity. So there's the, 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 the 0 point whatever percent chance that you'll use one over the other. When you want to run the code in the loop at least once, then you would probably use a, a repeat loop over a while loop. And if there's a possibility that the loop might not even run the code in the loop, then you would go more towards a while loop. But other than that, most of the times you could use either one of those loops. Okay. So when you look at a while loop, when we look at that condition, if that condition is true, we will keep doing the loop. So while the condition is true, it makes sense if you think about it with using your English language. While this condition is true, keep doing this. So while it's true, keep doing it. But with a repeat loop, while repeat doing this until the condition is true, that means when the condition is true in a repeat loop, you stop. So these two loops, they almost have the exact opposite type of condition. So the condition for a while loop will be the exact opposite to the condition for a repeat loop to make it stop. So if a while loop is true, the condition's true, keep looping. The repeat loop, when the condition's true, stop. So the, the reverse is obviously true. So when a while loop's condition is false, the moment that condition's false, stop the loop. So while this condition's false, stop doing the, don't do the loop anymore. Stop it. And with a repeat loop, while the condition is false, keep looping. Because when it becomes true, that's when we're going to stop. And then as we discussed earlier, you'll notice in the, the while loop, we had a need, we needed a begin and end, which is very important if you want to do multiple statements. But with a repeat loop, we don't need that because it's encased around that repeat and until operator. Okay, so those are the key differences between a repeat and a while loop. So when we talk about conditions, what are the, what, are, what do we mean by those conditions? Well, with a repeat in a while loop, that it needs a condition that's going to tell it when to stop and when to continue. Now those conditions we've come across before, it's exactly the same as what we did when we did if statements. So the condition must be true or false. It's like a question. You're saying, is this can the answer to this condition be true or false? And we use our operators like we check if things are equal to or greater than or less than or greater than or equal to or less than or equal to or not equal to so you can compare things to see if a condition has been met that will give you an answer of true or false or you can use if you've got multiple conditions remember when we used and and or operators and if statements you can use them you can even use set notation or not all of the things that we learned in the selection programming series about um, the criteria part of the if statement that can be used here so if you need to go revise that, go look at our selection uh, programming series, go see how we can do different conditions. So let's do an example. So we've got a while loop and we will say we want to add the numbers until the sum is 100 or more. Okay. Until the sum is 100 or more. So until while the sum is not 100, keep looping. So we're going to keep adding numbers onto what our sum, for, I would assume. And when our sum, if our sum is less than 100, Keep doing it. While it's less than 100, keep doing the loop. The moment our sum is equal to 100, or the moment our sum is greater than 100, then you will stop. Okay? And in a repeat loop, 
you'll notice that the condition is the exact opposite. What's the opposite of less than? It's not greater than. It's greater than or equal to. So repeat until our sum is greater than or equal to 100. So let's think about that. I'm going to repeat adding numbers until our sum is greater than 100. That's when I'll stop. So while I or repeat, when our sum is less than 100, keep doing the repeat. The moment our sum becomes 100 or gets bigger than 100, that's when we're going to stop our loop. So there's our condition. So you'll see that the while and the repeat loop, the exact same scenario, will have almost the opposite, or well not almost, it is the exact opposite condition. Okay, so let's take another example. Let's, if we want to add all the numbers from 1 to 100, do we know how many times we want to do this loop from 1 to that? We do. In that case, we can use a for loop. So with a for loop, we're going to add all the numbers. We're going to have a sum variable, r sum is equal to r sum plus r. Keep adding r. Um, obviously, we would probably have to initialize r sum before this. So don't forget to initialize r sum. And you'll notice that r is a looping variable. And what do you notice about the looping variable? It's a, it's built into the for loop. And what it goes from 1 to 100. And the beauty of this for loop is that it, it starts at a value. It starts at 1. And inside the loop, without you having to tell it, it will automatically go and increase by one every single time. So I will become a one and then a two and then a three. That's lovely for the for loop. But when we get to, for example, we want to add the numbers until the sum is a hundred or more. Now we don't know how many times to repeat the loop. So therefore we need a conditional loop. So when we do a conditional loop, we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to say r sum is equal to r sum plus r, and we need to initialize there. I've initialized it. I've learned from our mistakes. Initialize uh, r sum to a zero. Now, the problem with the while loop is that with the previous example, we had r. We had a looping variable that was going one, two, three. In a while loop or a repeat loop, we don't have a looping variable. So in order to have a looping variable that for that r that's going to go one, two, three, four, we need to manually code it into the scenario. So if you remember the for loop, the, the, the for loop when r equal to 1, it had a default value. It needed to start with a value. So we're going to give r a default value. In this case, we're going to start it at 1. Obviously, we do this outside the loop because we don't want it to reset it back to 1 every single time inside the loop. So outside the loop, we're going to initialize it to 1, our looping variable. And what's the other thing that the looping variable did? Well, it increased by 1 inside the loop. So therefore, inside of our while loop, we're going to obviously increase r so that that way, we've manually created a looping variable that goes 1, 2, 3, 4. You could have also set i is equal to 0 and then increased r, but right at the top of the while loop, right after that begin. So you could also do that. That would also work. So that's how we manually create our looping variable. Okay. So, and then our condition, whilst, while our sum is less than 100, keep doing that. Okay. And if we wanted to do a repeat loop, you'll notice that we'll do the exact same code. We'll just literally take out the while loop. Just take the while part away. And we're going to put in a repeat. And our until, which is the opposite condition. So our sum is greater than or equal to 100. Instead of our sum is less than 100 for the while loop. It's the exact opposite condition. Because it needs a true statement for it to stop. And if you remember with the repeat, we actually don't need that begin and end. We can actually take the repeat begin in a way because that's so that's how you can convert a while to a repeat, a repeat loop okay now what happens in this scenario let's let's look at that r sum is equal to r sum plus r i'm going to make that plus into a minus hmm, what does that mean well r sum starts off being a zero and then we're going to minus one the first time so it's going to become minus one and then it's going to increase r is going to become a two so we're going to minus two the next time and it's going to be minus 3 and then minus 4. So our sum is going to just keep getting smaller because we keep on adding a negative. We're adding a number and it's getting smaller. It's going to add minus 1 and then minus a 2, then minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. It's keep getting smaller. And we want to repeat doing this until our sum is greater than 100. Now, if our sum starts at 0 and we keep minusing, there is never a chance that our sum will become 100 or more because it's getting smaller. So what what is this? What's going to happen? Well, this is what we call an infinite loop. This loop will never reach the condition. And so it, the loop, the, the condition's never met. It will keep on doing this code and it will actually make your code like crash eventually because it can't loop forever. So this is actually a problem in your code, in your logic. You need to have some sort of way of making sure that you terminate your loops to make sure that your conditions are structured in such a way that they will end. Let's go see that how we do this in an example. So looking at this example, we've got a for loop. So we're going to add the first or from numbers from 1 to 100. I'm displaying R and then the sum of that value. So let's just have a look at what that for loop is going to look like. 
So it's going to go from 1 to 100, and we can see that if we add all the numbers from 1 to 1, it's going to be a 1. Add all the numbers from 1 to 10, it's going to be 55, and so on. So we're going to keep on going until 100. Now, I'm going to use a while loop to go until the sum is 100. So we're going to cheat a little bit and see when does it actually become 100 or more. There it is. So when it gets to 14, you'll see that it jumps over 100. So that's when we actually wanted to stop. Now, imagine if we didn't know. If that was the case, we would need a while loop that goes, it's exactly the same code, except for, uh, no, in this case, we had a looping variable built into the for loop. Here I've got my r variable, which is my, my looping variable, which I initialized to zero, and inside I increase it by one. You see, in this case, I started with zero and I increased it straight away. So I'm going to keep doing this loop until r sum is less than 100. Or, or not until while while our sum is less than 100 keep doing the loop the moment it gets above 100 or equal to 100 you can stop doing the loop and it's literally the exact same code you look there those two lines of code are exact same as those two the only difference is i've built got my built-in uh, looping variable and my condition will end when the sum that's increasing by one two three four is less than or equal to 100 when keep doing it and then when the moment it gets above 100 stop just stop doing it so that's what we're going to do. So we're expecting it to end at 14. And there we go. You see it stopped at 14. And if I made it 1,000, it would carry on until the sum was 1,000, which is 45. So we add from 1 to 45, you'll get above 1,000. Then it stops. So that's how we make our loop stops. Now, for a repeat loop, how do I do the repeat loop? Like, watch it. I'm, I'm literally going to copy everything exactly the same. I'm just going to copy all this code. And I'm going to paste it over here. Luckily, I've already declared those variables. I sum in there. And I'm going to take out this part. I'm actually just going to comment it out so we can see what it looks like. And in front over here, I'm going to put a repeat. And then at the end, we can have a until. And our condition will be the opposite of that. So it'll be our sum is greater than or equal to a thousand, not less than. It'll be the opposite. Opposite of less than is greater than or equal to. And we don't need the begin and the end. So we can actually take the begin and end out. And, and that's my loop. So we took out the while, which I can now delete. And the code in the middle is exactly the same. We just put a repeat until part. And we should get the same results. Remember, we're going to 1,000. So which means we need to get to 45. Ah, oh, urethra. I mean, Rika. There we go. And that's how it works. Now, if I make this, let's go to this one. Let's do this one. If I make that a minus, let's make this an infinite loop. So that means it's going to get smaller, smaller, smaller. Our sum will never be greater than a thousand, which means this is going to loop forever. Let's see what it's going to look like. Let's see, it's going to get smaller and smaller. It's smaller, smaller, smaller. It goes on forever and ever and ever. And it's just going on. And it's the never ending story. If you haven't seen the movie, go watch the movie. So you see, it's, it's an infinite loop. It, it doesn't know when to end. If that happens, you'll see your program is like like frozen now. We can't do things. like Okay, so what do we do? Go back to your Delphi program you're over here. You can click on that button over there. That's the program we set. Or you can go to run. Where is it? Project. Uh, run. No, run. Sorry. Run. Program reset. There we go. Control F2 is another option. So run. Program reset. Boom. There we go. So that's how you stop your program from going into infinity and beyond. Okay, and there we go. That is our introduction into conditional loops. For the other videos in this video series, go to our YouTube channel, subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook and Twitter. Let us know what you feel about our videos. We'd love to hear from you. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.